I'm here at the Cordoba African Film Festival and I'm talking to Victoria Thomas who is a filmmaker who is pitching one of her films in the Africa Produce part of the festival. Victoria, what's, what's this film about? Um, my film is called Two Weeks in Lagos and it's about a guy from Nigeria who lives in Scotland. He wants to be a music producer but he's working as a bouncer in a nightclub and he takes f pictures with famous people who come to the nightclub and he goes home for his sister's wedding and his friend sees the photographs on his phone and they ask him a very simple question, did you meet this person through work? And he says yes, but he's referring to his job as a security guard but the friend wrongly assumes that he's referring to his job as a famous music producer because that, it, that is what everybody thinks that he's doing. So because he sort of fancies himself as Nigeria's answer to Simon Cowell, he does not tell the friend and he takes the photographs and announces to the press that a famous Nigerian from the UK is back and they were going to be staging a competition to rival X Factor. And because um, Lagos is the place where everybody believes that everything is possible, he wakes up in the morning to find the entire country, from government down to the street sellers, everybody came to get a slice of this big, big musical pie from Nigeria's most famous musical son. Um, he's in Lagos for two weeks, he's used to living in the UK, so he assumes that not much can happen in two weeks, because in two weeks you might get a meeting with a commissioner if you're incredibly lucky, except in Lagos, everybody believes that everything is possible. So whilst he's saying, well, it's just two weeks, nothing much can happen, Everybody in Lagos thinks it's a challenge. And yeah. so the friend goes out of his way to prove that a lot can happen in just two weeks in Lagos. So it's a comedy of errors and set in one of Africa's most populated cities where everybody's a hustler and yeah. everybody believes. Where if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. Where if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. And if something is going to go spectacularly right, it will also go spectacularly right. So he, everything snowballs and he's cut up in the middle of this. But he's also incredibly embarrassed about saying that he's a security guard in the UK after being there for 10 years because for the first time he's looking at Africa and everybody seems to be doing incredibly well. He's going out clubbing and people are spending more money than his monthly rent on alcohol and he's just suddenly feeling incredibly out of place and questioning the decisions and choices that he's made because when he left Lagos he was going in search of a better life and suddenly better in the UK was not looking incredibly um, better. You're also co-producing a film for the Finnish Production Foundation? Yeah, I'm a co-producer as a director from Zambia called Jessie Chisi and she's working on a, a feature-length documentary called Woman and Hold which is about the life of Esther Ferry, a well-known um, Zambian boxer. And it's uh, pretty much, a, the, it's called Woman on Hold because it's a story of almost how unpersonal um, emancipation from cultural pressures. And it pretty much follows her um, decision to become a professional boxer after she had been um, betrothed to somebody. Somebody had paid some money for her to um, get married. And a she, dowry, in a effect. A dowry. And she returned the dowry once she discovered that she could be, um, you know, have a career of her own, have a life of her own, and this was something that she enjoyed. So I'm looking forward to us um, getting that done. They're filming the remainder of it towards the end of the year, and hopefully that should be out next year. And of all the many things you're doing, you're also doing a piece of software called Clipper, which is about mapping African cinema audiences. Yeah, um, as a because uh, I studied producing, that's what I did in film school. And I also knew that I wanted to make films that were set in Africa, but I did not want to make the sort of films that get funded. I was not going to make a film about anybody with AIDS or poverty or people dealing with war. I wanted to talk about the Africa that I knew, the Africa that I grew up in, um, and just present Africans as what we are, humans having the same sort of universal experiences, uh, but within a very authentically African context. And I knew from just by being in the UK and all the meetings that I was having and the tutors in my film school, that trying to make a positive film that was set in Africa, I was going to have a major problem with um, distribution. So I figured that the internet was there and there was so much information out there and we were all connecting with each other. There were so many friends of mine from school that I had not been in touch with in 20 years that I suddenly found myself connecting with on Facebook. And so I felt like this was a, a bridge. It was a way for me to um, try and connect with people who would believe in the Africa that I know 
and who would be interested in seeing the same content. And I have lots of friends who are filmmakers who are having the same issues. So we decided to develop a mapping software so we can showcase what we're doing, trailers, try and aggregate audiences, see who's interested in the film. And as more and more people use it, we begin to get a map pretty much of where audiences are for African films, where they're concentrated, what cinemas are near them, what alternative venues are near them, and also what alternative platforms they have access to. So we can do things like day and date releases. So you can get your films through the festivals, but capitalize on momentum and just pretty much get it to where people are who want to see it, because that way you can begin to develop a sustainable model around them making independent And is, films. is the website live now? It's going to be live on next month. Um, it's www.clipper.net, so it's K-L-I-P-R, and um, we're going to be inviting films in case studies, so, you know, anybody who's got a film that's set in Africa or in the African diaspora, by all means, um, get in touch. Thanks for talking to me today.